Hi. Okay, so in this video, we're going to use the second derivative test for functions of two variables to find the maximum or minimum or saddle point of a function. So the second derivative test, um, really, since we're talking about uh, functions of two variables, this is really a, a test of the second partial derivatives, right? So we need to have, uh, first of all, we say u is an open set in R2. So what this means is that um, we're thinking about, of course, the setting where you have a uh, function from R2 to, to R, so your domain is going to be down here, and U is the set down here in which it's defined. This is my R2, my, my plane, my XY plane, and U is this set uh, down here where it's defined. Uh, open means, of course, that it doesn't include the endpoint, so I'm making those thick dots, those, oh, sorry, those um, dotted lines, and then your function uh, up here, it's going to be something like that. So on that domain, you need to look about something about the surface like this. And we're trying to find this is z equals f of x, y. Right? So maybe um, this is the setting we're looking at. And I'm trying to find this maximum, right? Something like that. So OK. So this is what we're talking about. now. This is saying it has x0, y0 as a critical point. So that x0, y0 is going to be a point down here. And this is the point x0, y0. And critical points is going to mean exactly the same as in uh, calc 1 with one variable. That is, a critical point means that the partial f with respect to x evaluated at that point is the same as the partial y value at that point, and then zero. So the critical of point is going to mean that the partial derivatives, the first partial derivatives are zero for both. And you can see that because remember that the partial derivatives tells you the slope of the tangent line to when, when, when you go along this constant, you see a plane here, and you see this curve. So what you're thinking about is that the derivative of f respect to x is the slope of this tangent line. Oops, I wanted a different color. And that line you want to be have slope zero, right? That's the idea behind this um, of the partial derivatives to be zero. Now, the point is, of course, that it could be a critical point also if the first partial derivatives do not, do not exist, right? Remember that um, uh, you can have a corner like an absolute value function in, in R. So, and in that point, the derivative would not exist. So it would look something like this, maybe. You can have like a point like that. And that would be your function where at that point x0, y0. So this, if this is, this is what it looks like your surface, down here your d would be like that. But at that point, the x0, y0, the partial derivatives would not exist. Okay. okay. So you have to check the um, a critical value means either the first partial derivatives are zero or the derivatives do not exist. So I have to check those. Okay, but once you identify critical values, then how does the second derivative test work in this case? So what we do is you find you create this matrix of second partial derivatives. So all four, the double x, x, the y, y, the x, y, and the y, y. Remember that um, we know that these two are equal, right? The, the, is you take the mixed partials x, y, or y, x, it has the same value. You evaluate all these in, at the critical point. Right? And the, if you don't remember what determinant means, I wrote it in determinant because maybe that makes it easy to remember, but you just multiply this times that minus this times that. So this is the way you write it, if you want to remember like that. This would be a value at the point x0, y0 always. And so you get the value of that determinant. And if that determinant is positive, Okay, I'm going to explain why this works. We're just going to go through it. <clears throat> then you have a local minimum if the second derivative of the top corner is positive. So if this is positive, if in the case the determinant is positive and the first entry in this corner is positive, you have a minimum. If it's positive but that entry is negative, then you have a maximum. If the derivative is negative, then you have a saddle point. And if you get the bad luck that that determinant is zero, then this term will not help you decide what's going on.
Okay, so this is the second derivative. There's, there's a lot of things going on. So you need to find the partial derivatives to find the critical point by setting them equal to zero. You need to find the second partial derivatives to create this matrix. You need to evaluate at each critical point and then determine using these rules uh, if you, in which case you land. And if it's in one of the first three, then you can decide if it's a maximum or a saddle. So let's use this in an example. So my example, <coughs> I, I picked this one, is a very cool example. I'm going to show the graph of this in uh, D-algebra in a minute. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, so let's, let's do the math before we look at this graph, look what it looks like. Okay, so we need to find the partial derivatives first. It looks like it's going to be a little bit uh, interesting. So I picked an example that's not, not the easiest example to work this through, but it's, it's, it's good enough that we can follow the steps, I hope. So the first thing we need to do is find critical points, right? So the first thing I want to do is uh, find critical points. For that, I need to find the derivatives, the partial derivatives. So let's find the partial of f with respect to x. So when I do with respect to x, the y is a constant, so I only have the top, right? So I get the 3x squared minus 3, and the bottom is a constant, so I can leave it as it is. So it's like having everything over 5 and everything is still divided by 5, or you can factor that in front, it's not going to matter. Okay, the partial of f with respect to y. Now, you can think of this like, well, I really have, um, like, this is a constant now in terms of the y function, and you have 1 plus y squared to the negative 1. So the derivative of that is going to be the negative 1 comes down, this constant stays, and now it's going to be 1 plus y squared to the negative 2, so I'm going to put it right here. And now times the derivative of the inside because of the chain rule, so times the 2y, correct? That's what we get. So just to write it, because I'm going to use the next one, I'm going to write it like this. It's, it's the um, um, negative, let me write it like x cubed minus 3x is a constant times negative 2y over 1 plus y squared squared. So the first thing to find critical points is to find where is this equal to zero. So the first thing we need to check is that this is always defined. I have in the denominator 1 plus y squared. That is defined for every number y, because y is not going to be, the square of y is never going to be negative 1. So this is defined for every value. So I'm not going to have to check um, points where the derivative does not exist. So where is this partial derivative is equal to zero? So it turns out that it's not that hard, because I have this fraction here. And this is going to be 0, the first one, so I'm looking at, at the partial of f respect to x. This is 0 only if, um, so the partial f x is 0 means that 3x squared minus 3 is 0, right? So the denominator doesn't affect this, so I'm going to have, uh, if you divide everything by 3, I get x squared minus 1 equals 0, or a factor of 3, it's the same. And then if you square both sides, if you move 1 you square root, sometimes we forget, then we have two roots, so I like to factor. So I have two options. Either x is negative 1 or uh, 1. <coughs> okay, now let's do this one. For this one, it's um, this part is going to give me... Um, this is only going to be 0 when the top is 0. See, but I get x cubed minus... 3x equals 0. I can factor in x. This cube minus 3. Sorry, I factor in x. So this is x times x squared minus 3. So this is x equals 0 of root 3 and minus root 3. But then this part could be 0 over here, only if the y is 0. OK, now let's look at my options here. I need both of them to be 0 at the same time. So 
th for this one to be zero, for, for, for the partial, let me go back to the partial f with respect to x. For this one to be zero, x has to be one and negative one, or negative one. If x is either of these values, over here, x equals to negative three root three or three is not gonna make both be zero at the same time, right? So that cannot happen. So my only options here for having both equal to zero is that uh, I'm, I need to have this part equal to zero, the y has to be zero, which means the x has to be these values, right? So my critical points where both of them are zero at the same time, I really only have the points um, one comma zero and negative one comma zero. Those are my only critical points. Okay, because these values here, I'm not gonna be able to pair them up so that this, this partial makes zero. That it, these values did not make this partial derivative zero, and um, so it's not gonna work. Okay? So these are my only critical values, one zero and negative one zero. Okay, so we got that. Now what do we need to do now? We need to find the second partials. So if you, what we did over here, we need to find these second partial derivatives. Um, to do that, we need to go and go from here. So let's do it. So this second partial derivative, um, this one looks pretty simple. The second partial of f, if I do x squared, so x, x I'm doing right here, right? I just get um, 6x over 1 plus y squared because this is a constant. That one was fairly easy. Now, if I do fxy, if I do the second partial of f, and I take the y of the x, so I'm thinking, um, thinking about this one, okay? So I'm really doing the partial derivative of y of the partial derivative of x, which is this one, right? So the, now the x squared is constant, sorry, the all numerators are constant in the top, so this becomes 3x squared minus 3, sorry, stays there, and the denominator is 1 plus y squared, it goes to the negative 2 like I did it before. I get a negative in front of everything, and I have a 2y, correct? In the, the chain rule. So I got 3x squared, um, x to negative 2y, I forgot the negative somewhere. So negative 2y, uh, 3x squared minus 3, and then 1 plus y squared, quantity squared. Okay. Now, one more, I need to find the second partial derivative of y. So this is going to be more complicated. I'm going to copy what I had over here. So what I'm doing now is finding, I'm going to write it down. I'm finding the second partial of f with respect to y squared, which means to take the partial derivative with respect to y of um, what I had up here, which is x cubed minus 3x times a negative 2y over 1 plus y squared, quantity squared. I wrote it like that to have it on the same screen, but I'm gonna scroll up to have more space. Okay, so now I just need to take the derivative with respect to y, so the x cubed minus 3x is a constant. Uh, I have to use the quotient rule here for the, for the y part, so it's the denominator squared. Then it's the derivative of the top, which is just, um, negative 2 times the bottom. Oh, sorry, denominator squared, and I didn't put it squared. I left it as a power, so it should be 1 plus y squared to the fourth uh, times the bottom, 1 plus y squared squared. And then minus, so let me change the sign, it becomes a plus, the top, 2y, times the derivative of the bottom, which brings down to 2, then it's 1 plus y squared, to the power of one, 
and then the chain rule means the derivative of the inside, which is another two. Okay, so this is a constant in front and multiplying all that. I don't need to simplify this a lot. I need to evaluate this at a point. So I'm just gonna simplify a little bit just to see, to make it easier to evaluate. Um, but we don't need to do a lot of this with this. So I'm, the, I'm gonna leave this like, um, I get, um, I'm gonna put this guy first. So I have a two, a two and a two. So I get eight y squared, one plus y squared. I'm just writing that term first. And then I'm gonna write this term, minus two times one plus y squared squared. Okay, so that's the derivative of the second partial of f respect to y. So we're almost there. Um, I want to keep going. So what I want to do now is evaluate these things at the one zero and the negative one zero, right? So I would like to have a table with all this. So let me see if I can rearrange this to have it all together. I'm gonna resize this and make it a little bit smaller over here in the corner. I'm gonna uh, resize this and put it over here in the corner. Okay, so I have very tiny there, but we can see it. Because what I need to do now is basically just evaluate uh, these guys at these points. So I'm gonna have a table of my critical values, critical points, um, is the one comma zero and the negative one comma zero. I'm gonna find out what is the f x x at that point, who is the f y y at each point, and who is the f x y at each of those points. And then I'm gonna find the derivative, the value of the determinant, and then decide if it's a max or a min. Okay. So does, I'm just doing this table to keep things a little bit more organized. So what is f of x at one zero? So I'm looking at this one over here. When I plug in the one zero, that gives me a six. Okay, now what is f y y when I plug in the one zero? Um, so f y y is this one. So when I plug in here, the one zero, the x, this becomes, um, when the y is zero, look at over here, this becomes a negative two. So if you look at this carefully, when x is one, this becomes one minus three. So that's a two. But over here, this part, the first part is zero, because y is zero. And this is just a negative two, correct? So I get a negative two times a negative two, so I get a positive four, okay? And now the f, x, y, when y is zero, this guy is zero, so the whole thing is zero. Now let's go the same thing with the negative one. It's very similar, right? Now the f, x, x, when you plug in negative one on this one, it's a negative six. When you plug in a negative one on this part, it's gonna change, so negative one cubed is negative one, but it's gonna be a plus, so this is a positive two, and this guy becomes, um, it's the same. So this becomes a negative four. And the f, x, y doesn't change, that's a zero. So my d becomes 24 here and 24 here, so they're both positive. Now what am I looking at? This is decision making, okay? I'm here, both of them are positive. So all I care is what's the sign of the first entry, positive or negative. If it's positive, it's a minimum. If it's negative, it's a maximum. So that makes here that the first term here is a minimum. This guy is a maximum. Okay, we're done. Let's see if I have time to do the, to put this in, uh, in GeoGebra and look at this. Um, In here. So in here, I'm gonna graph my function and see what this looks like. So see if this looks up. So my function was, uh, I need to go back and see it, but I have it written over here. Let me 
screw up. I have the function was I need to write a parentheses, I guess, to do the thing. It's x cubed uh, minus 3x. And now in the bottom, that's not my function, I write uh, 1 plus y squared. So this is the surface we're looking at. Okay. This is the surface we're looking at. I don't know if you like that color, but that's what we're looking at. Okay. X cubed minus 3x divided by this. Uh, I have the 1, 0, no. Uh, uh, let me do the points. So the points should be the points we're looking at, right? So the points that we looked at should be the points uh, negative 1, comma 0, and the point uh, v is going to be a 1 comma 0. Okay, so that's my surface. And sorry, that's the point. I didn't find the y value, so let me find the fat value. Negative 1 comma 0. And if I plug it in, I need to find out what is it. So if I plug in a 1, it's negative 2, I believe. Negative 1 comma 0. It's, uh, that's a positive 2. That's the A point. And the other point is 1, comma, 0, uh, comma, a negative 2. So there's my point A and my point B, the maximum of the surface that we were finding. Okay, so it worked out great. Um, we found the maximum of this surface.